Good morning, welcome. And today is the 8th of February. Uh, and uh, we have a packed agenda, as I said. So let's get going. As usual, we'll do it in three parts. So we'll quickly go over the community highlights, uh, what happened in the last two weeks, what's coming uh, maybe in the next few weeks. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll jump onto the demos. Uh, we won't take too much time in the community highlights. So uh, we just I think uh, what we just released uh, version 19.2, and this is again, uh, just a incremental release. Uh, as you guys know, we have none of these releases try to break anybody and we'll continue to do that. Um, we are still targeting version 1.0 end of March, uh, which implies again, no breaking changes, but just some legacy uh, stuff will be removed. And there is one more change that's happening and that we'll talk about that today uh, during Yi's presentation. So uh, a bunch of changes in the new one, uh, UX, I think one of the most requested feature archive and archive workflow executions is in uh, with this archive and archive for all entities is going to be in in the next uh, release or so, um, which is essentially projects Workflows, tasks, execution, everything can be archived. And again, remember archive is not deleting, so you can always recover it, but it hides it from the UI, hides it from the CLI, unless you request that specifically. Um, there's a, you know extra node metadata that has been, uh, so now when you see the execution view, we did not see the nodes that are yet to be executed, now they are. Again, this is all setting up for the timeline view, which is almost, I don't know if you guys have been following the PR, it's almost in. So that you should be able to see the execution timelines for various nodes and all of this works well together. And also sets up for dynamic workflow visualization as well as map task visualization. Uh, in flight kit, uh, actually this is an overall system change, but specifically happens through flight kit Python is a new structured data set type. So we had, um, if you've been using flight schema, um, you some of you have requested that there needs to be a little more flexibility within flight schema, for example, support for complex types as well as support for uh, arbitrary backends. Uh, and so now structured data site supports that. And we'll be talking about it later after Martin's uh, discussion. Also, FlightKit now supports intra-task checkpointing. Uh, that means if you have long running tasks, you, if you schedule them on one of two things, if you schedule them on spot machines um, and you, if you have a retry, you, in your retry you want to resume from the last uh, point, you can use intra-task checkpointing. You can uh, use it for anything. This is not specifically a machine learning checkpointing, but of course in machine learning, you can use it for training. Um, and that's an example and so on. In the future, in, in coming soon would be additional pieces that will help it even, uh, make it even easier to use with like high level frameworks like you know, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow, Keras, and et cetera. Um, and, and one of the other biggest changes probably in this release is that there used to be an older flight kit API, which probably most of the community is not using. There are some folks still using. It has been deleted the code has been reduced dramatically. It was one of the biggest PRs, probably 20, 30,000 line or more. Um, it's all gone. So the, uh, if you now check out Flight Kit, you should see a much more easier to understand code base potentially. Um, so please uh, definitely check it out and let us know what you think. From a system point of view, lots of security updates. Um, uh, on, on that note, we are constantly running security updates. We don't want folks to end up uh, in a situation that, you know, with the log4j or something. So we are constantly updating um, uh, the code base, finding security vulnerabilities and fixing. That does still mean that there is still a possibility that we may not know about a security vulnerability. So if you do find one, please report, help us fix it. Help. Let's keep everybody in the community, um, you know, who are using flight safe. And uh, yeah, uh, flight CTL also does support multiple installations of flight now, so you can just switch between multiple installations. 
All right. Uh, actually, we don't have a list of contributors today because something went wrong with the script. But uh, thank you to all the contributors. We usually do put the pictures here, uh, uh, but we've we've had at least ten or 15, 10 new contributors within this release. So thank you, everybody. Uh, as usual, we are actually solidifying this. Uh, I don't think everybody knows about this enough. So again, uh, we do office hours along with this community sync. This community sync happens every Tuesday, every other Tuesday. And every Wednesday, about 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening Pacific time, uh, either hate them or I open up a, a Zoom channel and we just let anybody who wants to join ask questions, uh, come in and ask questions. Uh, this is your time. It's absolutely, you can ask any question discuss, use it to share certain information or discuss use cases. Uh, and there are two ad event links, please use them if you want, guys want to get hold of us. Um, and next sync for community sync, we have uh, Merantix. Um, they, they have been doing up some fantastic work with FlightKit and like making it even easier to launch uh, workflows uh, also easier to actually build the containers themselves. So uh, definitely look forward to that. Another one is by Woven Planet. Um, and Woven Planet uh, is essentially Toyota's arm of building autonomous vehicles. Uh, and so they use flight extensively and they'll be talking about how they leverage flight for their perception stack or their uh, slam stack, et cetera. And there is a newsletter that best way to stay in touch with what's happening through the newsletter. Please subscribe, please share it within your network. It really helps us and there's a YouTube channel. All right, from a roadmap point of view, as I said, I briefly touched these things, but the timeline view, dynamic workflows and map tasks, we, we weren't able to ship it this 19.2 uh, release uh, because of a dependent library, but we'll be shipping soon. Um, so from a system point of view, we, we are, uh, again, another requested item is deep hashing of offloaded objects for improved caching. For example, what that means is if you have a pandas data frame today, flight only uses references to uh, cache them. Uh, now, if you can use your own custom hashing techniques to uh, decide when the cache, when to cache certain things uh, instead of just using references. Uh, and so for example, because this is this can be expensive, so this is optional, but as you opt in, you can provide your own hashing methods. Um, also, uh, another thing that we've been seeing is different people have different setups with Kubernetes. Some people have DNS requirements, some people have um, different sort of security policies. So uh, lots of changes have been going into Flight Plugin. So we've realized that we're going to solidify all of that into a pod template and allow you to customize how every container that Flight launches uh, with the default set of pod uh, parameters directly uh, configured in the backend. So along with that map task retries and map task max parallelism, bounded parallelism is all uh, getting checked in. Uh, this might come in, we are not 100% sure, but failure nodes in workflows. So every workflow uh, you can have like a try catch semantic um, and you can say in case of failures do X, Y, Z and it can be an entire workflow. Um, and, and then a, a very futuristic or uh, helpful thing for folks who are going to, uh, you know, going to getting started with flight and are initially working on is single binary flight. So all of flight backend in one binary. <laughs> so that you can get it started with very, very quickly. Uh, flight kit remote, we are going to uh, do GA. So there are a couple more small things to be fixed in there and we're working on it this this month. And then of course, uh, type annotation, the medium type, which we've discussed in the past. All right, that's, uh, that's what we are working on in this next month and little more than that potentially. There is also some work that's happening around uh, visualization of custom metrics within the UI per task. Um, and so if you guys are interested, definitely DM me. We would love to get some feedback. Uh, think about this, like you can plot your accuracy or you can plot specific things if you are like doing something as cool as, uh, you know, building a 3D planet. 
uh, you may want to plot like number of buildings or some sort of other metrics, then um, we would love to support. Like there is a way that we are thinking of supporting this as a general framework. Love to chat with you.